Hello there, everybody. Hope everything is going well for you today. Um, right now, we have episode 3 of the DVD Studio Pro series, and we're going to be starting off right where we left off on episode 2. So, we just exported all of our footage from Compressor, or well, using Compressor. Now, we're going to be importing it into this project, which has the same frame size and same um, settings as we do the footage. Um, so, basically, we're going to be um, starting to build our DVD. So, over here in the Assets window, hit the Import button. And here we see we got the audio, and if we hit the command key, and we also click the uh, video layer, and hit import, and these things will start to import into our project. There we go. And if we look underneath the status bar, we can see we have two green lights. And what that means is that DVD Studio Pro has processed these two assets, and we can now use them in a project. So if we click one, hit the command, um, command key, <laughs> and hit the other one, then drag these two up into the graphical viewer, and drop them on in there. We can see that it creates a new track with both the video and now the audio. Um, by default, we also have a track one. However, we're not going to be using that, so I'm just going to click delete. So now here we got many one and then video for solo ensemble, those two tracks. Um, for tutorial purposes, I'm going to be deleting many one to show you guys a little bit of how to set a first play, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so over here in the templates window, I'm just going to find a basic template. Um, something like this, drag it on in here, and here we got um, t our menu and our track. Um, I'm gonna um, title menu one, track or title screen, or just title, um, because we want that thing, um, that menu, to be the very first thing that the audience sees when they put the DVD into the DVD player. So um, in order to make that possible, to make it um, be the first play, all we have to do is right click and hit first play. So now, whenever someone puts this DVD that we finally burn into a DVD player, this is what um, they're going to see when they first launch it. Um, if we look at the video layer, we can see it's actually in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but if we come over here to the menu, we can see that this is in a 4 by 3, um, which is you know, a little bit awkward, you don't really want that. So in order to change this, make sure that this menu 1 is selected, come over here to menu, underneath the inspector window, where it says display mode, from 4 by 3, change it to a 16 by 9 letterbox. Um, the difference between a letterbox and a pan scan is that a letterbox kind of preserves as much of the menu as you can see on a 4x3 television. Um, basically what that means is it's not blown up so it's a full screen, but you can still access all the buttons. Um, to show you what I mean, I'm going to quick, um, quickly simulate this DVD. So right now we're at a 16x9 letterbox setting. If we hit simulate, we can see we get these two black bars along the top and we can have the full menu here inside of the window if we're in a 4x3 um, TV. If we change it to a 16x9, we can see that now we have um, the full access to the full menu and everything is all handy dandy. But if I were to come back here and change this to a 16x9 pan scan, then hit simulate, we can see that now on a 4x3 television, it's f um, fairly blown up and we might not be able to access all the buttons. So this could be a you know a downside or an upside, um, but again, if we change it to a 16x9, we can see it's a full screen. So that's the difference between the two. I recommend using letterboxing, but it's totally up to you. All right, so now we have this menu and we got a brand new video track. Um, right now, both of these things are just kind of sitting on the DVD. They don't really talk to each other at all, so it's impossible to be able to play this video track. In order to get um, this video track able to play, what we want to do is come over here to the title menu where it says button one. Make sure that button is selected. Come over here to the inspector window where it says target, not set. We're going to set this. So come down to Tracks and Stories, Video for Subtle Ensemble, or whatever your track name is, and hit Chapter 1. Um, by default, DVD Studio Pro puts a Chapter 1 marker at the very first frame of your track. As we can see right here, we got it down there. So now hit the title screen, and we hit Simulate. Then hit Button 1, we can see that it comes over and plays this brand new DVD, or the track. <laughs> we can close out of that, and um, surprisingly enough, that's actually something it took me a while to figure out because no one really you know, had that on the internet, it's fairly basic. And I think people just kind of like think you know it, but really it's something that, you know, a little bit hard to figure out, at least for me it was. So um, I'm going to change both of these menus back to a 16x9 letterbox. And we can also do this for the video too. Um, I recommend doing it for the video. So we select that, come over here to general, and where it says display mode, along the top, um, we go to 16 by 9 letterbox. <coughs> Sorry about that. So if we come back here to the title screen, um, we maybe change this 
the title say my new DVD or something and change it to whatever you want. Um, so another thing that we see here, we can see we got these two or six drop zones. What a drop zone is, it's more or less a place where you can bring in an asset and um, put it in there so that people know what that button links to. Um, to show you guys what I mean, I'm just going to take this video, um, the video for some ensemble layer, drag it on top of it, and hit set as asset. So now whenever someone simulates a DVD, we can see that um, we have the little video there above the button. And that's kind of a way for um, to indicate to the audience what that um, video is. If I were to close out of this, um, let's see what else. Oh, um, chapter markers. So um, on most DVDs, you have kind of like a play all option, and then also you have a scene selection button. Um, for the kind of stuff that I do, I really like using the scene selection because that allows for, you know, different sort of, um, well, I do a lot of like musical DVDs um, for people who like for concerts and everything. So oftentimes I want to have like a kind of a song selection. And so because of that, I use chapter markers a lot. So let's see here. Um, along the video layer here, um, let's say we want a performance um, or a scene selection to be starting right here at this performance of Sonata Opus 19. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and see if we can find the playhead. It's right there. I'm going to just drag this back so we're at the very beginning frame of this performance of Sonata Opus 19. So about right there. And then along this kind of gray bar right above the playhead, we're going to just click somewhere. We can see it creates a brand new chapter mark. It says chapter two. So if we come back here to the title screen um, and maybe select button two, we're going to come over here into the inspector window. Make sure that make sure that button is selected. Where it says target not set, come down to tracks and stories, video for solo ensemble, and then chapter two. Now this is going to uh, create a chapter two um, marker, so more or less a scene selection for that um, performance. And again, if we want to come over here and um, select this video, this asset drag it on top of the button and hit set asset. Um, if we come over here into the inspector window again, making sure the button is still selected, where it says start frame, we can kind of push this forward to where the performance of that um, piece is. So I believe that's a performance of Sodata Opus 19. Yep, it is. So we can um, come back here to the menu. There it is. We got the button linked. So it's going to chapter two. Now if we come up here and hit simulate, you can see now we have button 2 and it's linked to this performance of Sonata Opus 19. So we can click it and see how it looks. There it is, and yeah. So if we want to um, um, continue around here and do this for all six of the buttons, we can do that. Um, but for time purposes, I'm not going to be doing that today. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you guys like this, um, hit the like button or leave a comment down below saying what you thought. Um, if you want to see more of these, you can stay connected on Facebook. The link for that is down below in the description, along with the link to my brand new website. Um, let's see. If you have any tutorial ideas, you can leave those on my YouTube page underneath the to moderator module. Um, so you can thumb up the ones that you want to see and thumb down the ones that you don't want to see. And yeah, so that's fun. I hope you guys um, enjoyed this, and I'll see you next week, next Monday, with a brand new tutorial. See ya.